Aloha everyone. I have a question for you. Is he your anchor? Is he your anchor? You might be wondering what in the world I'm talking about. Well, hi, I'm Brian Ashpole, pastor at Honolulu Assembly of God here in beautiful Honolulu, near world famous Diamond Head. It's Wednesday, September 8th, and I'm excited, friends. I'm excited as I am every week because we're looking at incredible scripture passages all this month of September that have the potential to be life-changing. That's right, friends. That is right. If you apply these powerful, life-changing truths to your life, they can, they can uh, change your life. And today's powerful, life-changing truth comes from Hebrews chapter 6. In the New Testament, toward the end, not long before the last book, Revelation, you'll find the book of Hebrews. And let's think about that question. Is he your anchor? Is Jesus Christ your anchor? And what am I talking about? Well, we live in a world that's full of all kinds of of bad things and negative things and, and uh, rough things and uh, disappointing and devastating things. For example, this Saturday marks the 20th anniversary of September 11, 2001. Like December 7, 1941, the day that uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked, and we here in Hawaii certainly know all about that. 9-11 is a day that will live in infamy, just as uh, December 7th. On September 11th, terrorists launched attacks on our own U.S. soil, in our own backyard, using airplanes as their weapons. They uh, bombed the Twin Towers of the World Trade Center and also the Pentagon. Nearly 3,000 people were killed. It was a devastating uh, day and, of course, uh, a very sad memory for all of us uh, who, were, who were alive at that time. We're currently experiencing the devastation of COVID-19. People are getting sick and even dying from the dreaded disease. It has spread fear and confusion. Lots of questions. In fact, one of them is, should I get the vaccine? Some people desperately want it right away. They want it yesterday. Others are adamantly opposed to it. And still others are worried that if they do get the vaccine, will it be enough? By the way, just a little sidebar here. The vaccine is not a spiritual issue. If you want to get it, then get it. If you don't want it, skip it. But don't let it become a point of contention as it already has become with way too many people. Well, COVID-19 has had a great impact on jobs and businesses. Due to shutdowns and restrictions, many people have either lost their job or had a drastic reduction in pay. Supply and demand has been greatly affected. It is now difficult to get some goods. They're either back order, backlogged, or out of production. And the government has been a source of controversy. There are lingering questions for some people about the validity, excuse me, the validity of last November's election process. Plus the government's actions uh, when it comes to the pullout from Afghanistan, basically abandoning them and the loss of billions of dollars of military equipment. Um, that's outraged millions of Americans and others, uh, including our allies around the world. It's just not been a good thing. Well, these issues and others have led many people to form a very pessimistic view of life. They are worried about their health. They're worried about their finances. They're worried about the vaccine. They're worried about the government. They're worried about their future. The future is uncertain. Their hearts and minds are filled with anxiety and stress, worry and fear. And even Christians, I've met Christians who are worried about that. And the truth of the matter, friends, is this. We cannot have both fear and faith. We cannot have both trust and worthy. They do not coexist. There's no way they're going to be there together in your life. No matter what you think or even what you say, you will either have one or the other. You can't have both. I've heard too many Christians, for example, say, well, I'm trusting in the Lord, but I'm really worried about this situation. Just fill in the blank. And I'm trusting the Lord, but I'm really worried. Okay, that doesn't work. You're either living in trust or you're living in worry. You're either living in faith or you're living in fear. You can't do both. You can't have both. Remember, remember Philippians 4, 6, and 7 that we looked at, you know, some time ago? Paul writes to the church of Philippi, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in everything, by prayer and petition, supplication, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. What a wonderful promise. But that does give us a barometer, friends. If fear is going up, then faith is going down. And the opposite, if faith is going down, fear is 
if fear is, excuse me, if fear is going up, then faith, faith is going up, then fear is going down. Excuse me, I get, got the vice versa mixed up. But one or the other, fear is up, faith's down, faith's up, fear is down. And uh, the measure of that, Paul tells us, when we're putting our trust in the Lord, we're not living in worry, we're not living in anxiety, we're not experiencing stress. What are we experiencing? We're experiencing peace. It's that miraculous, amazing peace that passes all understanding. It will rule in our heart and mind. And I urge you, brothers and sisters, choose faith, not fear. Let's turn now to Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 13 through 20. It's a wonderful passage. It's a great promise for us today. Hebrews chapter 6, beginning with verse 13 through the end of the chapter, verse 20. When God made his promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised. Verse 16, men swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear, the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. Verse 18, God did this so that by two unchangeable things, in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope offered to us may be greatly encouraged. Verse 19, we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Beautiful promise. It enters the inner sin. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. That's a, a beautiful picture there. And the author of Hebrews goes on in the next chapter to explain about the connection between Christ and Melchizedek. But let, let me read verse 19 again. That's our key verse for today. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. This hope, based on the fact that God does not lie and God does not change, is the anchor for our soul. Now, anchors, are, of course, are nautical devices. that uh, They provide stability to ships during harsh storms. They protect them from being tossed around at sea. You put an anchor down, you, the ship will stay where it's supposed to stay. The boat will stay where it's supposed to stay. So during a storm and, and even during the calm, sailors drop an anchor to keep the ship safe and secure. My question for you is who or what is your anchor? Who or what are you anchored to? A lot of people are anchored to money. They're anchored to fame. They're anchored to power and influence. They're anchored to relationships. They're anchored to um, their, what they see about themselves, what other people think about themselves. They're, they're, they're anchored to one thing or another. And we need to realize, friends, we need to realize that all these things may look appealing at first, but none of them can offer the everlasting security that we can find in a relationship with Jesus Christ. None of them can do that. So don't put your life in the hands of something temporary. Don't put your life in the hands of something man-made, something that won't last, something that will, will be washed away by the storms of life. See, if it's going to be washed away by the storms of life, that's not much of an anchor. We need the anchor that, that lasts, that stays. That's the anchor of Jesus Christ, especially in these storm stormy days and months and years that we're living in there's a site uh on the internet godquestions.org it's a good one it, you, it answers questions from a christian perspective and i recommend it to you but it, it says this in the bible an anchor is used as a symbol of our hope in jesus that gives us stability and steadfastness in life in ancient days, the first century, the anchor was used in artwork and engravings as a symbol of Christianity. You know, just like the fish symbol. We're familiar with that, fish symbol. Uh, Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior, those Greek words stand, uh, spell out the word, the initial letter spells out the word ichthus, and that stands for fish. Well, anchors also were uh, a, a popular symbol, and they appear in the Roman catacombs, for example, on the tombs of uh, Christians showing the Christian steadfast hope in eternal life. Well, according to the Bible knowledge commentary, excellent commentary on the Bible, sailors would often carry the anchor in a smaller boat away from the ship to where it could be dropped. Well, this, of course, is a great image of Jesus, our forerunner, who has entered heaven and made our hope secure. Instead of an anchor that reaches down in the sea, 
our anchor, the Christian anchor, reaches up into heaven where Jesus Christ has gone before us. Verse 20. Jesus, who went before us, has entered on our behalf. Now we know from Romans 8, 34 that Jesus is there continually interceding for us. He's always making intercession for us. Friends, we are anchored to the Holy of Holies. What a, what a powerful anchor that is. A great, steadfast. Well, according to verse 19, this, the, you know, the, this hope... We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. Well, according to verse 19, the anchor of our souls is our hope of God's inheritance in Christ Jesus. Unlike feelings based in doubt infused this definition of hope that is common in our world, well, you know, I, I hope this is going to happen. Now, you know, I, I, I really hope it happens. You know, the Christian's hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor. Our hope is firm and secure because it is based on Jesus and the promises of, of God. Our hope anchors us during the stormy seasons of life, friends. We have been given an anchor for the soul, a lasting hope that is both sure and unshakable. Everything else is fleeting, it's changing, it's, it's moving, but Jesus Christ remains the same. In fact, Hebrews 13, 8 says that he is the same yesterday today and forever hallelujah well god question uh, makes another statement when the storms of life flood the christian with worry fear or doubt he or she can hold on to god's promises and find stability in the salvation that jesus christ has provided friends no matter what happens god's promises remain his promises remain he does not want his children you me he does not want us to be set adrift he wants us to be fixed in a secure place just as an anchor grounds his ship to protect it from going adrift at sea i mean you don't anchor that boat man it'll be gone on the waves of the tide well so also does our hope in jesus christ keep us grounded keeps us secure during the difficult during the uncertain, often painful tempests of life that we face, whether it's a terrorist threat or COVID-19 or financial instability or government turmoil or an uncertain future, friends. There's a beautiful song that was written a number of many years ago, Ruth K. Jones, Ruth K. Jones. And it was made popular by George Beverly Shea. You might remember him, the, the singer, special singer for Billy Graham Crusades. And, it, and that hymn that Ruth K. Jones wrote is entitled, In Times Like These. And it goes like this. In times like these, you need a savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. Yes, he's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. Oh, that's glorious, friends. That's a wow. No matter what is happening in the world today, Jesus Christ is the rock that does not move. He can't be shaken. He's the anchor that holds us steadfast and unmovable. He will keep you safe. He's going to keep you secure. Don't live in worry, friends. Don't live in fear. Live in faith. Live in trust. Live in peace. Hallelujah. Now, friends, isn't that beautiful? That is powerful. That can be life-changing for you. That can change your life. Is Jesus Christ your an anchor? Is he your anchor? As I've shared before, every morning, early in the morning, my wife and I are, are involved together in reading the Bible and sharing in prayer together. It's a beautiful time. But along with the Bible, I read several devotionals every morning. And the most recent one that I've added to that is entitled Courageous Faith Through the Year. Something for every day. And the one this morning that actually inspired what I'm sharing with you today is Bill Hybels, longtime pastor and author, uh, sadly since discredited. But what he writes here for September 8th is, is really great. He entitles it, The Anchor of Our Souls. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. You give, your sh give me your shield of victory and your right hand sustains me. You stoop down to make me great. Psalm 18, verse 28 and 35. 
Tragedy teaches us afresh that life needs to be valued and celebrated. Tragedy reminds us that evil is alive and well, and that we need strength and wisdom beyond our own to overcome it. Tragedy reinforces the truth that courage and compassion are greater than complacency and isolationism, that unity is more important than pettiness. And tragedy recalls us to a deep and abiding faith in God as the only anchor that can steady us during rogue winds. Only God, only a relentlessly redemptive God could do this quality of work. So when trouble comes your way, open your mind and heart and say, God, work in my life in these dark days. Speak to me, God, I'm listening. Teach me, God, I'm willing to learn. Prompt me, God, I will obey. Tell me what to do, and I'll do it. With God's help, we can gain perspective in the midst of calamity and come out the other side better for having experienced it. Great, great statement. And it includes a, a prayer point. Pick one of the sentence prayers above that I just read to you that resonates with you. Spend some time quietly praying that sentence and listening for God's leading, friends. Live in hope. That's what we talked about last week. And that hope is the anchor for your soul. Hebrews 6, verse 19. Jesus Christ is the anchor, friend. He's a rock. He's a sure foundation. The storm winds, the wind, the storms come and the winds may blow upon it. Huge waves may crash upon you. But our anchor, our rock, our sure foundation will not change. They will not be shaken. They will not be moved. Is Jesus Christ your anchor, friends? Is he keeping you safe? Is he keeping you secure in the midst of the storms of life? Or are you being tossed to and fro? Are you being tossed back and forth by the stormy winds and the pounding waves in life? Only Jesus, friends. Only Jesus Christ can keep you safe. Only he can keep you secure, keep you unshaken, keep you unmoved. Praise the Lord. That's a wow. That's a double wow. Now help me out, friend. Is Jesus Christ in charge of your life? Is he your master? Is he your savior? Is he your Lord? Is he your anchor? Have you surrendered your life completely to him? I want to challenge you to repent of your sin. Declare Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord. Put all your trust in him and do it today, friends. Do it today. Don't put it off till tomorrow or next week or next month or even next year. Do, do it today. Maybe you've done that. Maybe a response to what I've shared today and I invite you to please leave a comment. I really want to hear from you. And please let me know how you're doing. Whatever you, wherever you are, wherever you're watching, please leave me a message. Maybe our website, honoluluag.org. It's a great looking website right now. Just type in honoluluag.org. It'll bring you right there. Or maybe you're on our Facebook page. And as I mentioned each week, that's probably where most of you are. We've seen a lot of response, a lot of, a lot of views there. And thank you so much for doing that. Uh, if not, just go to Facebook. And if you're not there yet, just go to Facebook and, and uh, search for Honolulu AG. Or maybe you're not on social media, and that's okay. Uh, our YouTube channel will be more convenient for you. And you just go there and search for Honolulu Assembly of God. And, and friends, when you get there, would you give us a like and a subscribe? A, a like on Facebook and a like and a subscribe on, on YouTube. And friends, would you please, please... Please share our website and our Facebook and our YouTube resource with others so they can be encouraged. Also, if you've been blessed, if you've been encouraged, if you've learned something, you've been inspired today, would you share that with someone else and uh, so they can be encouraged and inspired also. We're going to go to prayer in just a moment, but let me share you one more thing that I'm excited about as I am every Sunday, every week, and that's this Sunday, September 12th. And in recognition of that 20th anniversary of, uh, of September 11th, which is happening on Saturday, the very next day on Sunday, we will consider the question, how should a Christian respond to evil? How should a re Christian respond to evil? Thankfully, the Bible gives us hope. <laughs> it gives us hope. Hallelujah. Please join us in person in the building at 1035 a.m. for worship. It's going to be great. If you cannot join us in person, please join us online for the live broadcast on either Facebook or our YouTube channel. We'll be live at 10.30, 5 this Sunday morning on both Facebook and YouTube. And invite you to join us there if you can't be with us in person. We're going to go to prayer at this time. Are you ready, friends? Are you ready? Well, let's do it. Let's go to prayer. 
Father, thank you that you are the anchor. Jesus Christ, your precious son, is the anchor for my life. That in this world of stormy winds and pounding waves that threaten to capsize me and cause me to go adrift, Lord, you're the anchor that keeps me safe and secure. I thank you for that, Lord Jesus. I put all my hope and trust in you. Help me to become more like you, Lord. I pray that for myself, and I pray that for everyone watching, Lord, every man, every woman, every young person, every boy, every girl. Would you be the anchor for their life? May they look to you and be saved, and may they find their, all their security and safety and everything that they need in you. I pray that in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Hello, friends. God bless you. Jesus loves you. Aloha and aloha keaku. Well, there's more life-changing truth coming up right here, right where you're watching. So I look forward to seeing you again next time. Until then, God bless. Aloha. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.